Good morning, dear children. So it's summertime, and so we got our theme for summer. Wish y'all were here. Wish we could have Sunday school like we do normally, but you know, we're still at home doing that. But it's summertime. We're able to get out and, and enjoy the summer. So let's, uh, let's go on in and let's talk about that. So we have these, these new summer things going on, and we're starting a new lesson on Ruth. But before we do that, let's go to our new lesson. We got a new uh, uh, verse of the day. We're in Exodus 20, 12, and this ties to what we're going to talk about with Ruth. Honor our father and mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord our God gives to us. So when we honor our mothers and fathers, our time on the land is, is honored. And so that's exactly what's going to happen with Ruth and her mother-in-law. And we're going to learn a little bit about that today. So we changed books today. We're still in the Old Testament, but we're in Ruth. All right, so turn to Ruth. There's only three chapters in Ruth. It's a short little thing. And this is at the time of the Judges in the Old, Old Testament. So this is 1,300 years before Jesus even came to the earth, right? Jesus has been forever and ever, but he's coming. He uh, was coming in form of a baby. And this is 1,300 years even before all that. So here's Ruth. We've got a picture of Ruth. Let's go ahead. Uh-oh, a drought. No, look how bad that could be. Wow, and we've got green grass all around us, right? So here's this drought. Well, let's find out what that is. So we're in Ruth 1, this verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days of the judges, remember the judges, and there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, here we go with Bethlehem again. Isn't that cool? That the Lord keeps those cities all together. Bethlehem and Judah. And by the way, this is in the promised land. And went to dwell in the country of Moab. Uh-oh. Moab's not a good country. But let's find out why he had to pack it all up. He and his wife and his two sons. Well, the main reason is is because there was a famine in the land. Okay, So he had to pack his family up and go to this other area. And we'll show you that. The name of the man was Elimelech. The name of his, of his wife was Naomi, and his two sons were Malon and Chilion of Bethlehem. And here they are as a family. They're just coming into uh, to this uh, other area. They don't know it. They don't know the people there. And so they had to get out of where they were in order to eat. So here's the two children, and uh, here's a, um, uh, oh, goodness, uh, his wife and Elimelech. And so there they are. And so... They started out in Bethlehem, went up to Jerusalem, came over, and came down into the area of Moab. So you can see the relationship of all that. So then Limelech, Naomi's husband, died. He died. Oh, no. Can you imagine being without your dad? And it's just you and your mom uh, living? That's kind of actually what happened to me. But uh, and she was left and her two sons. Now, they took wives. The two sons took wives of their own, but they were women of Moab. Not sure they knew who... who uh, who the God of Judah was and the God of Israel, okay? They're in their own little world. They have their own little gods. And the name of uh, the other, one was named Orpah, and the other one was Ruth, the subject of our lesson today. And they dwelt there about 10 years. Oh, no. But then both Malon and Chilion also died. <sighs> wow. Both of Na Naomi's husband and then her two kids passed away. So it's just Naomi now and uh, Orpah and Ruth, those are the only ones that are left. And here they are consoling um, um, uh, Naomi. So that's Orpah over there, and here's Ruth here. And, and these aren't blood relatives. They're, they married her blood sons. And so these in-law children of hers, these uh, children-in-law, daughters-in-law, are there consoling her because they love her. And, and she's been explaining what it's like over in Israel and how wonderful her God is. To these, to these people who don't even have any idea who her God is. Therefore, she went out from the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her. So they went. She was going to go back to Bethlehem from Moab. Just, you know, I, my life really isn't here anymore. Let's all, let's all go back to, to Bethlehem. And so uh, the two daughters with her, and they went on their way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi thought, you know, it's probably best. Look, I'm getting old. You girls are still very young. You have your lives ahead of you. Uh, why don't you go back to to where you where Moab is, where your families are, and 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 find new husbands and things like that. And so now they're talking about where they were now and going back to Bethlehem. You see, turn back, my daughters, go, for I'm too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight, 
and also bear sons, would you wait for them till they're fully grown? No. Would you restrain yourselves from having houses? No. My daughters, look, it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Here she is. She's, she's like, you know, I've lost my husband. I've lost my two sons. I mean, obviously, the Lord is very, very bummed with me and disappointed for some reason. And sometimes that happens to us. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. And so Orpah agrees, you know, I love you, mom, mother-in-law. I love you very much. But yeah, I, I, I'll, I think I'll go back to my people. And, but Ruth, Ruth hangs with Naomi. And so they lifted their voices and they wept. They cried because they loved her dearly. You know, they all three loved each other. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, look, your sister-in-law, Orpah, has gone back to her people and her gods. Interesting, and her gods. But return, return it with your sister-in-law. And there they are, and, and Ruth is like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm clinging to you. You're my mother-in-law. I, I know and I love you, and I know that we've got some good things planned for us. So let's, the two of us, keep going to, to Bethlehem. And so Ruth said, and this is a wedding vow in some cases, but this is where that's found. It's found in Ruth. Entreat me not to leave you. In other words, talk, help me to want to be with you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. And the Lord do so to me and all the more also if anything but death parts you and me. So they put this bond together and this is this is Ruth saying this to her mother-in-law. And so that was just very startling to her. So the two of them are locked on together. They have a purpose now. And by the way, the Lord did all this. The Lord knew what was going to happen. He orchestrated all of this. So the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened that they came to Bethlehem. And all the city was excited because they said, hey, is that Naomi? Because they hadn't seen her in like 10 years. So she's a little changed. So there's, there she is and all of her friends. And there's a... Ruth up on a uh, standing there and so they've come back and they're like who's this person with you and so they're back in her land with the God of Israel where where her life all began and now Ruth will start a brand new life in this new land and with the good with the Lord so she said to them don't call me Naomi Ugh, why call me Mara Mara remember the word Mara where do we hear about Mara with Moses? Remember that? For Let me just go there for a second. Remember with, in Moses, okay? We're talking about the, the exodus from the Egypt and down in the first place they came to. Remember was Mara. What was there? This pool of bitter water. See this dude spitting that water out? It's bitter. So that's the word there, Mara. Don't call me what my name is. No, call me Mara. For the Almighty God has dealt very bitterly with me. And I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. <sighs> well, that's how she feels. But, but when we finished the rest of the story, we found out how wonderful all of this is. Because Jesus comes through the line of Ruth. And so that's just fantastic. We'll talk about that next week. And so, uh, so Naomi returned, and Ruth and Moabitess, because she was from Moab, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. And that's where we're going to pick it up next week because Ruth meets Boaz. And we'll talk about that. So Boaz owns a field. He has some people gleaning. And that's our lesson for next week. So we got two more lessons on Ruth. You're going to love it. You're going to see how this all comes together because the Lord has a plan for our lives. We bum out and we get all disappointed and we think, whoa, it's us that the Lord has a plan. And so let's remember that. So I want you all to have fun this summer. And, uh, and remember, I almost want you to thank you for keeping up with the Sunday schools and, and all that. I know there's plenty of other things to think about and do, but your faithfulness is counted to the Lord. And he appreciates it, okay? Until next week, we'll see you. I love you all, and I wish we could see you all again. We'll see you then. Bye.